At a moment when the public's trust in the integrity of the U.S. Supreme Court is in rapid decline, it just so happens to be a recurring theme in our guest Stacey Abrams' new novel, Rogue Justice, the second novel in her Avery Keene series, which follows a Supreme Court clerk involved in another Washington conspiracy, this time involving our nation's courts. We're back with Stacey and the Rev. Um, I love all of the little things that are so perfect and accurate that only someone in the arena can get right when they write about the arena. So I, I just first have to, to congratulate you on, on writing this just exquisitely crafted novel. But I want you to tell me about, about your character and, and, and this book. So Avery Keene is a Supreme Court clerk who in the first novel sort of stumbled into a conspiracy. She was, well, stumbled nothing. She was yanked into it by a Supreme Court justice who fell into a coma. That's the while justice sleeps. But it really was a story of what do you do when you have responsibility but no authority? And what she did led to a fairly dramatic end. And so this next book is really about how do you face the consequences when you win? It doesn't necessarily mean bad is done. And we have this, sin, this sort of cinematic tendency to think, oh, now this is finished and we can move on to the next. And she gets pulled back in. And this time she is addressing the possibility of blackmail judges at our secret court, the FISA court. Well, and you're so brilliant to write, like you're right where the political zeitgeist has shifted, you know, so much focus now on the Supreme Court. But I, I want to ask you about that, that sort of bigger, you know, what you feel in your gut is what you just described that, and it's almost Biden-esque, right? The, the right outcome, but the danger hasn't passed. How much of your writing process is, is sort of your, your feelings and your processing of the political moment, and how much of it is just escaping into the characters? It's both. As someone who has been fighting for democracy and fighting for voting rights, we celebrated the peaceful transition of power in 2020, as you pointed out. But that doesn't mean that the threat of authoritarian and autocratic behavior in the United States is abated. In fact, it's picked up. It's just become more surgical and more obtuse uh, and obscure to many. And so we know that the danger is still out there. It's hard to get people to pay attention. And so part of the goal of Avery is to have a bit of an avatar who grapples with what it means to do the thing you say you're going to do and yet find that your work is not done. Yeah, I mean, I think this idea is so important. I think there's a piece for culture to do, for books and film to do in this fraught moment for democracy that it's not doing. I mean, what, why do you think that's the case? I think that uh, we've come, become so performative that we don't deal with real in-depth themes and in-depth positions that people would deal with. And I think what uh, uh, is refreshing about someone who is so engaged in changing what we had as the body politic, as Stacey Abrams was. I mean, there's no question uh, that it, you talk about the changing, the New South, you'd have to put a picture there. So she's somebody that that is engaged and then has used her talent. I mean, if you read this novel, her writing, she could have made it just as a novelist all by herself, and her writing coming from her. I mean, it's like Churchillian who could write, you know, Churchill could write and, and, and run. Uh, and uh, uh, other than she's divided my little family dinners, I have one daughter who's a novelist fan. Uh, Dominique has a novel and reading it, and you got to see the language. Ashley say, is she going to run again? Is she going <laughs> to public life? Nobody would be in office in Georgia if it wasn't for Stacey Abrams, which I'm, I'm going to ask her to commit that she's not finished with public life as she enjoys her life as a novelist. This is just uh, a, a bridge to the next mountain, I hope, for her. I think that is well put. All is right. that a yes? I, I'm certainly not done with public life. I think that it's important, though, to use all the tools in your toolbox and to explore questions and conversations that we don't normally get to have. And part of what I love doing with the novels that I write with the children's books, with the nonfiction, is to explore themes and conversations that we often don't think we have time for. But if you get to do totally. it while you're sitting on a beach and you happen to learn about cyber theory, then, you know, you feel better about yourself. Oh, I mean, no <laughs> doubt. And I mean, I think we should do a better job lifting up art and lifting up the arts, especially when they deal with the themes that we care about. And you probably reach people that would never turn on the news because it's too much. I mean, there are legitimate 
concerns about getting you know upset watching the news exactly. but you read this book and it's it's smart and it's important I, I have to ask about the Supreme Court though Please. I mean how much of what the, this clear crisis if you look at Gallup and all the people who've been polling on the question of trust in the Supreme Court how much having that as the backdrop this real existential crisis for trust in the court how, how does having to talk about that or getting to talk about that depending on your perspective play into having a book upset in that place it's important because we take for granted that we have controls on our president we have controls or at least the, the theory of controls on the presidency and on congress but we leave the judiciary to manage itself it's and crazy when you put it like that. <laughs> we do and they they are the only ones with lifetime appointments you can vote a president out you can vote a mm -hmm. congressional member out they're there and there is nothing in the constitution that removes them except for high crimes misdemeanor or death and a misdemeanor is a big m not jaywalking and so okay. i think what's so important for me and i use the fisa court to get us in there is we don't know if they're being blackmailed we don't know what is being done and that is not to suggest that this is what's happening in real life i, I write about possibility not probability <laughs> But what it does mean is that we have to also put in place controls to make sure that the possibilities don't become realities. We need ethics laws that are enforceable and that are clear and cognizable. It's not a harm.